welcome to my channel, Tiffany here of Tiffany Gordon Cosplay. And if you're new, I'd love to have you as part of our cosplay community. So remember to subscribe to the channel. On this tutorial, I'm going over how I did the shoes for my Gundam cosplay. So let's begin. And what you're going to need to make your Gundam shoes is, of course, a white base shoe, as well as four, six, and 10 millimeter EVA foam, half round foam dowels, Sharpies, cost tools, a circle cutter, an X-Acto knife and box cutter, cutting mat, Dremel and sanding drum, a heat gun, lots of contact cement glue, stretch fabric vinyl, a Cricut cutting mat, scissors, leather burnisher, clay working tools. You'll need some black airbrush paint, some paint brushes as well as all of your safety gear and I'll have links to all of this in the description. And I do have a pattern available on my website for these shoes www.tiffanygordoncosplay.com or see the link below. Now to first start off you're going to want to get your base shoe and for me I got mine from DSW. I don't know the brand offhand but from here you'll kind of want to see if if you're using my patterns if they're going to work for your shoe or you can make your own patterns. And for me for making the pattern I first wrapped the bottom part of the shoe in saran wrap and masking tape and kind of traced out with a sharpie where I wanted to have my foam lay on the shoe. Then I put this pattern onto six millimeter EVA foam. I will note for the Gundam shoes, they are going to feel a little bit more bulky just because that is the design and you will want it to be more sharp and we'll get to that in a second. Once your shoe pattern is traced, you're going to want to get a heat gun and heat treat your EVA foam. After this, you can then cut it all out. And on my pattern, there are two straight lines where the tip of the shoe will be. You will want to get an X-Acto knife that is extremely sharp and at a 45 degree angle, you will cut down in one direction following the line as a guideline, rotate the foam and then do it the exact same way cutting the opposite direction. This will leave a triangle like piece that you can remove from the foam and afterwards you can bend your foam into a sharp angle. And this is where that Gundam sharp corner look will come into play. Once that's done, you're going to want to go to your workbench and grab your Dremel and sanding drum and round all of the edges. And the last step for this part is going to be applying contact cement glue to where those seams are at the front that we remove the foam from. Once it is dry, you can then bend the foam into the shape and it will stay in that shape. Now put that piece to the side and let's go to the next pieces. These are going to be for the top part of the shoe, the front and the back part. And if you used my pattern, then you can just use the pattern. If not, you can do the saran wrap masking tape method and make your own pattern. And for these pieces, if you're using my pattern, you're going to be tracing part top, front, bottom onto six millimeter EVA foam. And then for top, front, top, as well as back, you're going to trace those pieces onto 10 millimeter EVA foam. Then cut out those pieces. You will once again want to score both the top, front, top and the top front bottom pieces following your guidelines with the same method we mentioned earlier. Sand and then glue your pieces for the bending part. Once that's done, you're then going to want to glue the top front bottom part to the back part of the top front top part. And it should look something like this. The last part to do for this front part is cutting a half round foam dowel and attaching it to the top front bottom part using contact cement glue. Now for the back piece. You should have already cut the main part out of 10 millimeter EVA foam, and now we're gonna be cutting out the circle piece. And for this, we're going to be using four millimeter EVA foam, as well as Cost Tools Circle Cutter to cut the circle. And there is a little oval-like shape in the center of this circle, and you'll want to draw with a Sharpie your guideline for this, and then with a really sharp X-Acto knife, you're going to pierce halfway through the EVA foam that shape. Then when you grab a heat gun to heat treat this piece, the heat gun is actually going to make the foam shrink a tiny bit, and it's going to make those lines you just pier expand. 
So you're gonna see this channel that's been carved out and it's a really cool technique. And the last step is to clean these up with a sanding drum and then you'll want to glue it to your main piece with contact cement glue. And that should complete all of the EDA foam parts of your shoes. Now for adding color and for this, we're gonna be using stretch fabric vinyl, which is going to be a laminating technique. And the fabric that I'm using is specifically from Spandex House. It is a bit pricey, just to be aware, and you will want to order more than what you actually think you're going to need. Also with this process, you will be going through a lot of contact cement glue. So buy the big barrels of glue. Of course, you're also going to need for using this a respirator and you're going to need to be working in a very well ventilated room. I highly recommend investing in a vent unit or working outside for this as it's going to smell a lot and you really do not want to breathe in any of these chemicals. And we're first gonna talk about the bottom red section. You'll want to lay your foam part on top of your fabric and get a general idea of how much fabric you're going to need to cover one side of the piece. Once you have that, cut out the fabric two times because you're gonna need this also for the back. And then I highly recommend investing in some Cricut cutting mats as these have a sticky surface that your fabric fabric can then stick to and not move around. So you're going to want to get your fabric with the right side facing downward onto the sticky part and the wrong side facing upward. And then you're going to apply contact cement glue to just about the entire surface. Don't worry, you don't need to go to the edge. So there shouldn't be any glue going onto the mat and you can reuse them. But after the glue is dry, you will then need to apply a second coat of contact cement glue to the fabric for this process to work. And we're going to be covering the heel of the shoe first, and you'll need to do the same process for glue onto the shoe as well. So apply one coat of glue just to the section on the heel you want to cover, wait for it to dry, and then apply a second coat of glue and wait for it to dry. Once the glue is dry, then get your fabric and place the center of it onto the back of the heel. And with a leather wood burnisher, you're going to then want to start on one side and slowly work your way downward. So that way this will remove any bubbles onto the surface. Then with the burnisher, you will slowly go towards the sides and wrap it all the way to the back. There will be overlapping and that's a good thing. Then you'll get a really sharp exacto knife and trim off where the extra part of the fabric is as well as for the overlapping section cut down the center. Then for the front part of the shoe, and this one is also going to be with the red fabric, that should already have glue on it. And for the foam part, you're going to also apply two coats of contact cement glue. Once the glue is dry, you can then lay the fabric on top. You'll want to start with the tip of the shoe first, rubbing it flat with the wood burnisher, and then slowly going towards the sides, going from the tip, following the burnisher all the way towards the back. Then you'll want to trim the extra fabric fabric around all of the edges, leaving enough fabric to wrap around the sides and a tiny bit to wrap around the back. Then repeat the same gluing process for the back. Two coats of contact cement glue. Once it's dry, you will then want to wrap the rest of your front fabric so it is flat on the back and then you will get another piece of your fabric and lay it in the center, starting from the center tip point using your burnisher and slowly work your way from the sides all the way to the back. Then just trim your extra fabric and this fabric should be flush to the edge. Now for the white sections, and we're gonna repeat the same process of two coats of glue onto the back side of our white fabric, as well as two coats of glue to our EVA foam. I will note though that with white fabric and the contact cement glue, it does dry yellow. So try not to have any of the contact cement glue go to the front side of the fabric as it is really hard to come off, as well as all of your edges when you trim with scissors the edges will look yellow, so be aware uh, you will have to do some touch-up painting in the end, most likely. And we're gonna first start off with the back pieces, and for this, we're going to get the fabric, lay it on top, and then start off by doing the circle section and then doing the outer section. You'll note that the fabric won't touch all the way towards the circle and that's okay right now because how we're going to fix that is with the leather burnisher first go around the circle 
This will get kind of close to the edges, but then we're gonna get our clay working tools, specifically the flat tip ones. And this is really where you're going to push in and it's going to define where the line is going to be around the circle section. And we're also going to use this piece for the channel oval section on the circle, putting our ceramic tool in and pushing inward. And this is going to leave an indentation where that part is on the foam. After that's done, we're then going to wrap our fabric onto the edges and you'll kind of want to do this like you're wrapping a present where the corners are then going to become sharp together and then once that is done you will then get some scissors and trim off that extra fabric on the corners and then repeat the process for covering the back. And this piece actually needs to be at a C-like shape to fit the heel of the shoe. And for this, I just got my heat gun and heated up the foam and the fabric. You will wanna be careful not to burn your fabric but heat it up and then bend it to the shape that you want. And I got some masking tape and taped it into that section. So that way when the foam cooled down, it would stay in that shape. You might have to go back though with your clay tools to get that circle definition back, but it should all be fixed really easily. And then for the front white section, and for this one, I'm gonna be doing it a tiny bit different. Because this piece is a little bit more complex, we're gonna be doing the fabric in two different sections. And for this, we're gonna start with the bottom section covering the foam dowel and the bottom piece. And you'll want to, when applying your contact cement glue to the foam, only apply it to the bottom section first. This will make it so when you attach the white fabric onto the surface, it won't attach to the top section and will make it a lot easier for you to trim it with an X-Acto knife. Then once that's covered, you can repeat the same process for the top section of this piece. And this is how my piece looked in the end. And you might notice some lines of where we cut the fabric. Don't worry, we're gonna deal with that later. Now for attaching these three pieces to the actual shoe. And I highly recommend before adding any glue to your shoe, placing the piece on top of your shoe and figuring out where you want it to sit. And then with a pencil going around and tracing where it's going to lay, this will be an indication of where you're going to apply your contact cement glue. And again, you're going to you want to do two coats of contact cement glue to the shoe as well as to the back of your parts for this to adhere. Then just attach your pieces. Now for detail painting. And for this, it's a Gundam, it's an anime. You want it to pop and be more graphic. And I like to go back with some black airbrush paint, specifically Createx colors, and go around by hand with a paintbrush. And this will get rid of any of your lines and seams and make it just pop more. I will also note that no, you cannot use a Sharpie with this material as it's just going to rub off and you don't want Sharpie rubbing off onto all of your white fabric onto your costume. And if you did have any of your seam showing, if any of the EVA foam is showing, or you got a little bit of contact cement glue on your pieces, you can get some of the airbrush paint and do touch-ups very light onto these pieces and then you won't see it. And that's how I did the shoes. And that guys is how I made the shoes for my Gundam cosplay. I hope this is helpful for you with your own high heel shoes and maybe for your own Gundam shoes. Ooh. And if so, let me know in the comments as well as I'd love to have you as part of our cosplay community here. So remember to subscribe to the channel and a big thank you to all of my sponsors here as well as all of my members, specifically those legendary members who help financially support me so I can continue to do this as my full-time job and bring you more cosplay tutorials. Yes, and I will see you for our next cosplay tutorial. Much love, guys.